Hello everyone and welcome to Kickabout. We are here to do our Premier League table predictions like we do every single year. And this year, I think it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I genuinely don't think that there is going to be any cross or a lot of crossover we had last year. I don't think there's going to be as much this year at all. No, I think bottom three were almost the same, I think, last time. Yeah, top four, I think, was, I think I might have one. Yeah. I think I like United third, which was wildly yeah. wrong. So I'm trying. I'm going to try and avoid the wildly bad predictions <laughs> that I did last year. But there's obviously a lot of teams that have had really um, big summer windows. Mm -hmm. West Ham have had a big window. Villa yeah. have done good business again. Transfer window still open though, and obviously there's a lot of clubs that haven't done anything. Yet. And also last year we actually did the recording late. So I think we did it after maybe two yeah. weeks of the season so had gone. We but we were recording there. this before yeah. the season starts. This time so we're not. We're not cheating. We have. We have no information to go on other than pre-season and transfers. Right, so um, yeah, we'll we'll get into the the main bulk of this uh, of the of the the predictions. I will keep a running tally across the screen as to who we're picking. Um, if I can work out a way of making it look nice with the actual table as it goes, I will as well. Um, we start from the well, start from the bottom. We'll start from the bottom and work up. Um, so uh, Dan, why don't you give us who you think will be in twentieth, who will come bottom of the Premier League this season? So I think twentieth will belong to Leicester. Okay. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't really looked at their pre-season, but I was talking to someone the other day in terms of FPL, and apparently they've had a woeful um, pre-season. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think out of the sort of promoted teams, they will be the worst. Uh, I think I don't know if they've signed a striker, but I know iheanacho has gone. They've got that Pat Sindaka who wasn't very good last time. They did sign that Hloslek from Leverkusen. Oh, he's just coming. He's not he's a striker though, really. Uh, he was a winger was he? as far as I'm aware I think yeah. he can play up front though so maybe yeah. depends on what they bought him to do of course um, and obviously he's still got Jamie Vardy but he's about 51 now so very injury prone these days um, so. yeah I, I think Leicester will come bottom I too have gone Leicester okay so there, there's me saying there won't be much crossover and there we go straight <laughs> off the bat there's one um, yeah just basically everything that you've said but there's also two other things to consider that I've heard as well one is that there is highly likely to be a mm. uh, points deduction this year for PSR uh, or failing PSR last year or the year before last when they got relegated. So there is likely to be at least you know, five, six, whatever it is. It depends how big the breach is. Um, so that's not going to help. And also, to your point about the pre-season, there is all, already, by the sounds of it, a bit of a fan revolt going on. Um, Steve Cooper is not well-liked by the Leicester fans already. <laughs> um, obviously, Enzo Maresca got them promoted and then they immediately buggered off to Chelsea. Yeah. Um, so Steve Cooper doesn't sound like he is endearing himself at the moment to the fans. So with all of that considered, I think there is going to be, uh, this is going to be a long season for mm. Leicester. Um, so yeah, I totally agree that I think they'll come 20th. Uh, in 19th, I have gone for Ipswich. I suspect you probably have as well. <laughs> um, to be honest, it's this is more just because I just simply don't think they've got the quality. We mentioned on the podcast mm. this week um, that... They're still rolling with like League One players in their squad yeah. because of the fact they got back to back promotions. Kieran McKenna in charge has done an incredible job there, and I I hope they have a good crack at it this year. And they will probably be everyone's second team like mm. Luton were last year. I just don't think they've got the quality. Um, I think they'll give it a good go. I think they'll be exciting to watch and it'll be great fun. Mm. But I don't think this is going to be a um, a stay in the Premier League that's going to last particularly long. Yeah, I mean I've also gone Ipswich. Um... Pretty much mirror what you say, um, and obviously I said in the podcast, they've still got a lot of League One players in that mm. team. Um, even the transfers, I like the signings, but Ben Johnson, I think, is a good signing. Yeah. Um, but there's players like that, and sort of like this son Liam Delap, which to me sort of mirrors um, Rian Brewster. Mm -hmm. for, I think it was Sheffield and Cameron Archer for Sheffield last season. Very young, inexperienced players that I don't, th you know, they could could be good. Um, I feel like they're the sort of player you want in the championship where it's going to be a little bit easier. Break them in. Um, yeah, break them in. And um, I just don't think they're going to be scoring enough goals in the Premier League to keep it switch up. Yeah, uh, 20 million for Liam Diab's a lot of money as well for a player that's barely featured in the Premier League. He's yeah, had a couple of appearances here and there. Two games I think he's played in the yeah, Premier League. So that's a, that's a lot of money. That's a bit of a left field signing, that mm. one. Uh, all right, who have you gone in 18th? Right, I think I might be slightly different on this one. Okay. I've gone for Brentford. Okay. Um, they were pretty poor last season compared to the sort of Brentford we'd seen over the, the past previous seasons. Um, 
I don't really know what's happening with Tony. He's not obviously he was away of England, but he's not appeared in a pr- single preseason game. So I don't know if he's going to start the season. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, there's the whole thing with his contract, him not signing a new one. So are they still going to sort of prioritise him um, in terms of playing, or are they going to try and ship him out and, and get some money? Um, they've signed Cavalio. I think it's a good signing from yeah. Liverpool. It's a real shame that Thiago. Yeah, got I mean they've signed that bad him injury because yeah, he looked good. Yeah, he scored like three or two or three goals in his yeah. first game. Um, it was rotten luck. I had a look through the Brentford squad and I just don't see any improvements compared to last season. Yeah, I think they've got talent up front. And Buemo, we know, is a good player. Mm. Johan Visser on his day can be good. Yeah. Lewis uh, Keen is it Keen Lewis Potter? Um, yeah. Like again, he's a bit of a. For me, he's a bit of a championship player. I'm not sure mm. he's quite got the quality to really kick it at the top level. We've got like Ethan Pinnock, Ben Mee. Yeah. They're not bad players. I'm not sort of disgracing them. I just I don't think they're good enough to keep them up. No. Um, unfortunately, uh, I'm in agreement with you. Oh, really? I so, thought that would be a <laughs> completely different thing. So I've gone Brentford in 18th as well. Uh-huh. Um, I think largely for the, pretty much the same reasons you said. And again, we talked about it on the, on the podcast on Monday. I think that... I think scoring goals won't be crazy difficult for them, I mean, in particular if they do keep Tony. I think if they let Tony go, that's almost the final nail mm. in the coffin for them, I think. Um, I don't think they've improved in the summer, and defensively they looked quite bad at times last season, and I just don't know if this is just a step too far for them. I think that we see this a lot with promoted teams where they can stay up a year or two, and then all of a sudden the investment slows down, mm. and they just sort of fall behind the grade a little bit. And I think that... For Brentford to stay up, it might be a case of three worst teams, but I think that they are going to be in a in that dogfight all season. Yeah. I think they will drop through, which will be which will be a shame because I'd like Thomas Frank. Yeah, um, they have done brilliantly to stay in the Premier League as long as they have. They've had some incredible games and incredible uh, nights at the uh, at that stadium. So, but yeah, I think it might just come to an end this year. Um, and seventeenth is me next, isn't it? Uh, go on. No, you, it's right. You go anywhere. I don't know who it is to be honest. Okay. Uh, I think Premier was me. Um. Hopefully we're different, but I feel like this one could be similar. I've gone Southampton. Oh, boy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No crossover, everyone. I assume we've got the same then. Um, I I think they've made some good sign-ins. Losing Bella Kotchup, which is a shame. I think he he is a good player for them. Um, But I like the Bereton Diaz sign. I think he could score goals if he stays fit. Um, I just feel like... I don't know why, but even though Southampton sort of came third out of those three that came up I just feel like they've got the pedigree to stay up mm-hmm. um, even though they apparently had one of the worst sort of defences in terms of um, the top bunch of teams yeah. but if they can sort that out I think they've got the quality to stay up just yeah I think it'll be tough I think this will go to the wire mm-hmm. um, I like the DS signing I also think that Flynn Downs could have a bit of a breakout season mm. because when he did play for West Ham in the Premier League the season before last he did actually play quite well and I thought actually we've got a bit of a player here and he could be a bit of a longer term replacement for someone like Mark Noble. Mm. We never really gave him a fair crack at the whip and obviously he'd gone down back down to the Southampton and he was integral to their promotion push. He was the signing by all accounts that they desperately wanted to get over the line. Um, so I think if he can stay injury free, which I don't think his injury record I think is very good, I think he's going to be integral to them and I think that you could see a little bit of a breakout season for him. So to the point that if Southampton were to fall through the trap door, I think you might see a team run a, uh, uh, you know, a, have a go at him and, and keep him in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, there we go. So, so far, so good. Four out of four we've uh, crossed over on. Uh, I'll go 16th. Love of God, please not let it be the same, but I've got a nasty feeling it might be. I'm going for Everton. No, yes, there we go. <laughs> we've got one. Uh, yeah, Everton. Um, I mean... I think they'll be in it until the very end again. I think keeping hold of Branthwaite is massive for them, but losing Anana is also massive for the opposite reason. Calvin Lewin can't stay fit. Uh, Sean Dyche's teams are always well drilled. They'll be difficult to break down. We know that. They'll be good for FPL points for that mm-hmm. reason. I just don't see where their goals are coming from and everything financially that's looming over their club, administrators in the offing, there's potentially another PSR drama coming with points deductions again. Uh, I think they're in for another long season. I, I really, and we say, I know we're repeating ourselves from what we said on the pod on Monday, but I really do feel for Everton fans because the last four or five years for that club has just been an absolute 
nightmare mm. for, for fans of that club. Um, and look, I've got no real skin in this fight because I'm not an Everton fan. I don't really care a great deal, but they are a, a historic club. I think they're one of, they the only club that's never been relegated from the Premier League. I think they're one of, one of a very select few, if, right. if, if that's not the only one. Um, there's so much history there, you know, I don't want to lose Everton out of the Premier League because of financially, how, how badly they've been run financially. But if they don't find investment very, very soon, mm. they are going to potentially fall through that trap door and who knows, could go, could disappear. I mean, I don't know about falling down the leagues, they could mm. disappear altogether yeah. if they don't get something sorted. So disaster looms for them. Um, but in Sean Dyche, they have the perfect manager to weather that storm. And I think that he will be, <coughs> excuse me, he will be the reason that they stay up because of how well he drills teams at what the, the, the work rate he gets out of his players. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be another long season for Everton fans with just nothing to look forward to. And it sounds horrible. It sounds bleak, but mm. that's what it kind of looks like from the outside in. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I mean, I've not really put too much thought into point losses and stuff like that in doing my, <coughs> um, Obviously, if Everton get like another points deduction or something, then that will sort of mess up my order, really. But I've put Nottingham Forest in 16th. Okay. Um, weird, because they've got some good players. You look at like hudson Adoy, Gibbs-White, um, Awanyu, however you say his name, um, even Chris Wood. Like, I, th- I think they've got some good players there. I don't really think I rate Nuno Santos that much. Yeah. Um. I just think they're going to be fighting with relegation again this season. Um, I, I, the reason I've put sort of Everton above them, I just I just think the Sean Dyche effect. He, he knows how to drag out one nil wins. Yeah, they barely score more than sort of one or two, but he's very good at keeping clean sheets, um, which is why Pickford won um, the Golden Glove last season. Yeah. So that's the reason I've gone sort of Forest below um, them. Yeah, fair enough. Um, is it me again? It is, yeah. yeah. So I 15th. I, I think I did mess up the order earlier. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've obviously sort of alluded to my point. I've put Everton in 15th. Okay. Um, purely, I pretty much already said it. I just think that they sort of managed to grind out nil nils or one nils. Um, and I think the Sean Dyche effect will just sort of. They'll, I think they'll be boring again this season. Um, but I think they'll do the job and they'll, they'll secure. Yeah. Sort of Premier League status again, which is that which is what they need. They need yeah. to be a Premier League club to get that investment. So Sean Dyche, as I say, is the perfect man to do that. Um, yeah, I totally agree. I uh, in fifteenth, I've gone Bournemouth. Okay. Um, I actually had them. I would have if we had done this a week ago. I probably would have had them slightly higher, maybe mm. a position or two higher. But that sale of Solanke is that cannot be understated. Just how big that is for Bournemouth. Mm. Um, a club like Bournemouth, with the greatest respect. It is very rare that you get a striker that can get you close to twenty goals a season mm. and keep on and keep hold of him long term. Um, I think they've done extremely well to get sixty five million for him. I think that is a fantastic deal for for Bournemouth to get that sort of money. But investing that money in another, in another striker that can replace those goals is going to be very very difficult. There are not many strikers around these days who can do that. Been linked with Inketia, so that would be an interesting. I think Inketia would be a great mm. signing. I don't know if he's consistent enough to get to yeah. that twenty goal mark. But I think that that would be a good bet. There was also some rumours flying around that they were going after that Omarada in or whatever his name is yeah, from Atletico. Yeah. Um, now that well, it fell through with Chelsea. Um, obviously Liverpool are signing the Valencia goalkeeper and they're loaning him straight to Bournemouth. A, 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 Liverpool, a Bournemouth a feeder club to Liverpool? Aren't they? Oh, or? Yeah, <coughs> um, and I'm not even sure Liverpool need it. What's, what's wrong with Kelleher and Alisson? Well, yeah, they're, apparently they're going to loan him out for the next two seasons. So there, there must be plans that Alisson's only going to have a season or two and then go because I don't know why they've not signed a single player and they're signing a goalkeeper they're going to loan out for two years. It seems a bit weird. Yep, transfer 101 by Liverpool. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think Bournemouth, um, it could go one or two, it could go either way with them. I think they'll have a solid season. I like the manager. I like what he's trying to do with the way they play. Obviously it took them a while to get going last season but once they got going they were really quite impressive. But make no mistake, they have to replace those goals somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got rid of Kiefer Moore, not that he would have been a replacement, but there's another striker they've gone. They've got goals around the team, Sinistera, Cliver, you know, these are decent players who can mm-hmm. chip in with a few goals, but they do need a focal point. So watch this space in, from, in terms of the next two weeks of this transfer window. Can they replace Solanke with a good striker? Eddie and Katia would be a good buy, I think, but I don't know whether he's going to get you that 20 goals, but he might get enough 
to see them safely mm-hmm. away from that relegation dogfight. So yeah, Bournemouth in 15th for me. Right, on to 14th. Um, I am going Nottingham Forest in 14th place. Um, sort of to your point about their attacking players, I feel like their attacking players will... I feel like they're going to have a lot of high-scoring games this year. I feel like they're going to, you know, they're going to be an exciting team to watch because of their attacking talent. The caveat to that is, of course, their manager, who is a bit of a pragmatic manager. We've seen that at Spurs. We saw it with Wolves. Mm-hmm. Um, but he did do good things with Wolves with a, with a limited budget, etc. But I must say, I do like their signings. I like Milinkovic from Fiorentina. I think that is a really good signing. Um, I think that that could help their defense out quite a lot. I like their attacking. Lineup of players. Um, mm-hmm. I think Gibbs White. I think if they have another season where they don't progress up the league, they're going to run the risk of losing a lot of those attacking players. I think mm-hmm. a one year could kick it at a bigger team. I think Gibbs White definitely could. Elanga, Hudson Adoy is kind of rebuilding his career mm-hmm. there at the moment. So Nottingham Forest have to show progression to keep these players engaged with the project going forward. But I like the signings. I, like, I think they've had a decent transfer window. Can they curb the goals going in the other end Milenkovic will help so yeah I, I can see them having an entertaining season if you're a Nottingham Forest fan I think you're going to be entertained this season maybe not always for the right reasons though mm. um, so yeah I'm going Nottingham Forest in 14th this year um, I have gone for Wolves in 14th okay um, a bit of a weird one because I do like Wolves and I like is it O'Neill Gary O'Neill, O'Neill. Yeah. I like O'Neill and I, I think Wolves are a good team My the reason I've put them so low um, one, they've lost Pedro Neto. Two, they've lost Kilman, which yeah. I think are big losses. Obviously, I covered their transfers in on the podcast, and I'll be honest, it doesn't mean they're not good, but I've never heard of them. Yeah. And they came for under £10 million each, which makes me feel like they're not going to be replacements for the likes of yeah. Pedro Neto. Except I mean, it's not unheard of. We've seen it with Brighton over the years. Yeah. And Newcastle, uh, not Newcastle, um, uh who was the other team I was going to say? Leicester did it yeah, when they had their yeah. uh, top spell. They were bringing in good players like Kante mm-hmm. and Mares. You know, we've seen it before. But you're right, it's, it's a gamble. And one of the big reasons for me um, is their starting fixtures. I feel like it could be a massive blow to them if if they go as badly as I feel they could. Yeah. Um, they've got Arsenal away, then Chelsea, then Forest away, then Newcastle, then Villa, then Liverpool, and yeah. then Brentford I think- City. <laughs> I think it's uh, not unfair to say that they have the toughest fixtures out of any side yeah, I mean, in the league. Obviously, they could pick up points against any of them, but you know, you look at those teams and, and they could be down the bottom by October. Yeah. Um, which is why I've... I've Obviously, that t- sort of has an impact on your sort of psychology as well in yeah. terms of playing. So that's the reason I've put them so low. 13th, then? 13th, um, I've gone Bournemouth. Okay. Um... This all depends on whether they do manage to reinvest that Solanke money or not. Um, if they don't and they go into the season with the players they've got or they panic by, they could end up being a lot lower than what I've put. Danny Ings is available. Great striker. <laughs> McTominay plays up front all the time. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I sort of feel like there's a bit of a project being built at Bournemouth. Um, I felt it was really harsh when they sacked O'Neill, but this new guy, is it, is it Iriola? Is that yep. his name? Yep. Seems to have come in and, and done quite well with them in the last season. Obviously, Solanke was a big part of that. But I feel like they're going the right way at Bournemouth. And if they get this Valencia goalkeeper, he's a very good keeper. So, um, yeah, I, I feel like Bournemouth could do well next season. But again, if, if they don't reinvest that Solanke money and get those Solanke goals back, they could struggle. Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, right, 13th for me, I've gone Wolves. Um, there is... All the things that you've said are very, very right, and they're definitely things to consider. Their opening fixtures are a disgrace, frankly. It's almost like somebody has got a fucking grudge against them or whoever made the fixtures. Um, but even without Neto and even without Kilman, I feel like the brand of football that they play under O'Neill, and I watched them a little bit in pre-season in a couple of games because they were involved in the America Tour that West Ham were. Um, the football they play is, is just fantastic. And I've, I... It strikes me as a sort of football where they can bring in slightly more flair players and they'll find it easier to integrate into a system like that where they're given a little bit more creative freedom than, say, if they came into a more regimented, drilled side that would rely more on physicality mm-hmm. of you know of their of their of themselves to succeed. And obviously, when you're bringing players in from Europe, um, 
that's not always an easy adjustment to adjust to the pace and physicality of the Premier League. But if you're prepared to allow them some creativity and a little bit of freedom, they can really uh, they can really flourish. So I like Gary O'Neill a lot. I think he's got a tremendous future in mm-hmm. management at the top level. Um, and despite those early fixtures, and, and it is a risk because it could easily go the other way for them, as you say, psychologically, being at the bottom after 10 games, looking up, that's mm. a, it's a tall order to get out yeah. of that. But if they can get through those games and pick up some points here and there and sort of keep their head above water and then build, I can see them having a solid season. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they've, they've got 100 odd million from Neto and, and Kilman, and they don't seem to have invested that particularly yeah. heavily so far. So let's wait and see what they do in the last couple of weeks of the window. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I think they can have a good season. Uh, right, into 12th place now. I am going for Brighton. Um, for me, Brighton are just a complete unknown quantity this mm-hmm. season. I I literally do not know where to put them. It almost got to the point where I filled in the rest of the table and then just put Brighton where there was a gap. <laughs> because I just don't know. Obviously, they've got the youngest manager in Premier League history. I think he's 31. Mm. Is he something like that? Yeah. Um, did well in Serie B, I think it was in Italy, uh, to get... No, was it? I thought it was in the Bundesliga. Or was it Bundesliga too? Yeah. Sorry, um, yeah, did really well there. So he comes in with a bit of um, bit of pedigree and Brighton's history with employing managers and by finding bargain players is very very good. Mm. So there's every chance here that I can eat my words and they can have a great season. Um, they got that Minter from Newcastle who's been tearing it up in pre season. I think he is one to keep an eye on this season. They've got some great attacking players. Uh, who was the uh, is it Japanese guy? Um, begins with M as well, doesn't it? Oh God, what's his name? You guys all know what I'm talking about the the winger that they had at Brighton, Japanese guy. What's his bloody name? I literally can't remember. I've completely it's completely gone. But you guys know who I mean. They've still got Ferguson. Google because that's, that's going to annoy me. Keep, keep talking. <laughs> They've still got uh, Ferguson. Is it Ferguson up front? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's he's a class player. Didn't really see huge amounts of him last year. Matoma. I think, Matoma. That's it. Um, I didn't see huge amounts of Ferguson last year, which was strange because when he did play, he looked great. I think he got a hat trick last year as well. I feel like he can maybe have a bit of a breakout season this year. But I just feel that defensively, Brighton was so bad last season. I mean, it, was it what was the, the number of games where they were scoring and conceding in the mm. same game? It's something like 20, as 20 well, or consecutive yeah. games where they conceded and, and scored. So uh, potentially very, um, uh, very fun to watch. Maybe just a bit too defensively open. So we'll have to wait and see. I'll be honest, I haven't seen much of their preseason. They could surprise us all and go top half. Or they could maybe slide a bit further down if it doesn't work out with this new manager. So, yeah, 12th place for Brighton for me. Top 12 is where I really struggled to get my order in place. Um, I've gone for Fulham, okay. which I was a bit annoyed about because I think Fulham are going to have a really good season. They've made some good signings. They've lost Pal- Palina. Yeah. Um, but I feel like the players they're bringing in to sort of fill the gaps have, have only made them stronger, especially with the likes of Smith Rowe. Yeah, Smith Rowe is a brilliant signing. Yeah. Um, and they're, spoiler alert, they're sort of my dark horse of the season. I mean, I already told you that anyway. But yeah. I wanted to put them a lot higher. The reason they're 12th is because I just feel like there's 11 better, play, better teams. <laughs> yeah. It's play. not necessarily because they can have a bad season. Yeah. It's just that they're maybe just still a little bit behind the other yeah. teams. Yeah. Um, so, honestly, I, I, I'm looking forward to watching Fulham um, from game week two onwards. Um but <laughs> so I just got that because I realised who they're playing on game week one. Um, but yeah, I think Fulham are going to have a good season. Unfortunately, I think there's just eleven teams that are going to have a better season. Yeah, that's fair. All right, into eleventh um, then. Um, yeah, and one of those teams mentioned is Palace. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, is it Glas- Glasner? Who's yeah, Glasner. The, yeah. yeah, Glasner. Glasner. How um, is his name? Came into Palace and turned them into bloody Barcelona. Um, <laughs> they were unreal. Towards smashed the end of the us. Season. I think they beat Liverpool. They're smashing Liverpool. Or Newcastle. I think they scored like five goals against. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, if they can keep that form going into this season, they could be a real force. Yeah. Um, my only thing is, you've got Fulham trying to take Anderson, and you've got Newcastle trying to take Gay. So. I would be surprised this close to the season if they lost both their starting. Yeah, and there's backs. obviously still some question marks around Eze as well. Yeah, Eze. They've lost Elise. Um, Mateta's been at the Olympics, so he won't be starting the season. Mm-hmm. So there's lots of question marks in lots of different areas um, where I'm a bit like I could have a hindrance on what happens. But on the face of things, like I said, if they if they carry on like they did from last season, 
they don't lose any more players, I think they could be fighting for that top 10. Yeah, I think that's all fair. Um, in 11th place, we are gone Fulham. A um, little bit like you, been impressed with what they've done in pre-season. Um, I think if they can add Anderson to the ranks, mm. I think that helps because they did lose Ad- Aradabayo, whatever his name yeah, is. Tossin. To, uh, yeah, Tossin Arad- Aradabayo. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he obviously went to Chelsea along with 4,000 other players. Um, but I, yeah, I do like what they've done. I think they've done some good business. I think Smith Rowe could be one of the signings of the summer. I know he's coming for reasonably big money mm. for a club like Fulham and he does come in with a slightly questionable injury record in recent years. If they can keep him fit and firing, that could be one of the signings of the summer, I mm. think. Um, he's already looking sharp in pre-season. He's yeah. got a couple of goals in a couple of games. Two games yeah. um, big question mark around, is it Muniz, Muniz up front? Yeah. Whether he can find that form that he when he you know lit up the Premier mm. League for 10 games or so last season. Can he find that form again? If not, where are the goals coming from? That's my only question. That's maybe why I didn't... I resisted the temptation to put Fulham like 10th or higher yeah. purely because I'm just not convinced that they're going to find goals from a striking perspective. Mm-hmm. If if Muniz doesn't fire, doesn't fire, Raul Jimenez is not a prolific goal scorer anymore. Um, I think they've just got Vinicius Junior back. He's never done it at top level in Premier League mm-hmm. consistently, so he's another outside shirt. So they might have to dip in. Um, you might find that Fulham maybe make a... Uh, a late signing in this transfer window for another striker if they start the season slowly. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they're in 11th. Uh, right, now we go into the top 10. And to Dan's point, this is very much now... Uh, the, the, to, to me, there is so many teams in this top 10, maybe by the top two, where I could go... I could make an argument for one of them being at the top mm. and one of them being down below and then swapping yeah. around. So in 10th place, I've gone Crystal Palace. I think that for the first time in... As long as I can remember, certainly for the last five to ten years there is genuine optimism and excitement around Crystal Palace at the moment. Glasner's come in and he has absolutely been a breath of fresh air to them. He's got them playing in a in a much better attacking way, which is what they tried to do with De Boer and Vieira, but it didn't work out. But Glasner seems to have found the secret source. My question will be, to your point, the players that they've let go, Elise, obviously that's a big hole to fill. If Eze stays, that's crucial. But can he be the sole provider for someone like Mateta? Uh, obviously, Who's the um, the midfielder that went to England and didn't play? Wharton. Wharton, yeah. Obviously, he's going to have a big season, mm-hmm. I think. I think he's going to be a, a key part to what they want to do. Um, but I would also say that even with a depleted squad, they wouldn't have had Gay, they didn't have Eze, they didn't have Mateta. Mm. In pre-season, when they played West Ham, they absolutely shit all over us. I mean, we weren't great. I'll put it, I'll, you know, make that perfectly clear. But the football they played... Uh, I think they beat us 3-1. They could have scored six or mm-hmm. seven. Um, the quality of the goals they scored were outstanding, and that was with Edouard up front um, and with like Jeffrey Schluck Schlapp, playing. Yeah. So don't get it mistaken. Just because one or two of these players leave, because of the style that Glasner plays, he's able to get more out of the average mm-hmm. players in that squad. Um, I also like the signing of uh, Kamada. Mm-hmm. I think he's a great signing. He, I saw him at Frankfurt when West Ham were in the Europa League. He was very good, so he could be a good signing for them. So, yeah, genuine optimism at Palace. I think the Palace fans will be really disappointed if they lose, if they were to lose Elise, Gay, Anderson, mm. and potentially Eze all in the same window. That yeah. would be a real kick in the teeth. But I think they've got a manager. As long as they invest that money wisely, they've got a manager who can really drag them uh, and squeeze the quality out of their, of their team. So I think from Palace point of view, despite the transfer side of things, I think you can look forward to a quite an exciting season. And I think that you... This could be a little building block for them mm. to really maybe start. Um, I don't. I think going any higher than tenth would be really kicking or, or, or shooting above their uh, above their weight or punching above the weight. Is the saying I'm looking for. I think that's a that's a step too far beyond that this season. I don't think they'll be knocking on the door of Europe. But if they can continue going on the this trajectory and bringing a good players, I think Europe seventh place is within their reach within the next year mm. or two if they can continue on this path. Just quickly sort of round up your thoughts on Palace. I've, I think I've said on these videos before that to me they were always a club that they were just there. Yeah. Like they, you know, they, they were just... Well, along, like a stoke, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, they were like along for the ride, never really down the bottom, never anywhere near the top. Um, Which actually, in fairness, is, is still an achievement in itself because when you when you kind of just tread water in the Premier League, it's very easy to slide down that mm. league. So the fact that they've managed to retain stage yeah, oh, is still a, a I think good it achievement. Was, it was just like, you, you look at teams and, you, and you're sort of like, oh, we've got Brighton this weekend or, or we've got West Ham. Whenever we you had Palace, even though they would win games, you know, with the likes of Sahar and stuff like that, 
they never had any fear factor whatsoever. No. And now they do. And now they do, yeah. You know, I think I think Palace could be a, a good team to watch this season. Yeah, totally agree. Um, was it my 10th? Uh, I think it's me. So I'll go... I oh, no, 10th. Yeah, sorry, 10th. Yeah. Yes, you. Um, so, yeah, my 10th is Brighton. Okay. Um, I think they've... I think they'll be obviously a difficult new manager. You don't really know how they're going to play. They've looked really good in pre-season, um, scoring a lot of goals, the likes of Minter, Matoma's back fit, Jao Pedro, who's had a couple of injuries already, but he's scoring goals when he's playing. Danny Welbeck's been scoring loads of goals. Has he? He's their joint top scorer for pre-season. Wow. Um, good yeah. old Danny Welbeck. <laughs> it seems like he's been around for about 30 uh, years. No. Um, it feels like ages ago we sold him to Arsenal. Is, so. uh, is James Milner still going to play? He's still there. He's he still played going? in the pre-season the Fucking other day. Yeah. He's, he is literally, he, he has found the fountain of youth. Mm. Somebody needs to find out where it is. Um, they signed a player called Barco, um, young lad who's been playing left back while his Dupian's in, injured. So, um, and he's looked really good in pre-season. I think Bright, Brighton are another one of those. I think they'll either do quite well or they'll sort of be what, you know, there'll just be another team that are there for the ride. Yeah. Um, but I feel it's difficult. I don't really know the manager at all. Um, but the way Brighton have been sort of plucking these managers out of nowhere, I feel like Brighton will be a good team to watch. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so then it's me again, yeah? Yeah, ninth place. So ninth place. Sorry, Chris, I've gone West Ham. Ah! I Even inter- with our transfer summer? I'll explain why. <laughs> I think the players you've brought in are unreal. Um, I think you've made you've probably had the best transfer window, I would say, in my opinion. Um, every single sign-in, I think, has been a good one. My only thing is, and it's a bit like on Football Manager, where you sign an entirely new team, <laughs> yep. takes them a while to gel together, and not only do you have a new team, you have a new manager as well. Mm-hmm. Um and when I say new team, it's almost like a brand new starting eleven in terms so of the players. Defensively, inside. I mean the front three or four is probably going to be fairly similar, mm. with the big exception of maybe full cook in for Antonio mm. at some point. But the back line is going to be outside of Emerson. The back line is going to be entirely different. Yeah, um, which will take a while to gel. Um, I think next season you could be very much up there fighting for Europe, Europa League again. Don't get me wrong, this season. If everyone gels together, then I think that could, you could easily be sort of in in and around sixth place. I think yeah. um, the only reason I've put you ninth is I I've just gone with that. I think it will take a while to gel. Yeah, um, yeah, that's fair. I think that's a fair yeah. fair shot. So that's that's the only reason. Yeah, that's I think that's fair. Uh, in ninth place, I've gone Chelsea. Mm. Um, Lee is going to fucking kill me for this, but <laughs> I think that they're, 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 this season the reliance on Palmer and and Kunku. Um, is so heavy this season. I, I I don't recall a side like Chelsea ever going into a season where you're looking at one or two players and thinking, if they don't perform, you are in deep shit. Mm. Um, the lack of a plan, the lack of a, 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 a cohesive, joined-up thinking at Chelsea, is it beggars belief. The longer this summer window has gone on, it's just got more and more ridiculous as it's gone on with the number of players they've signed. Was it 40... Eight players yeah, or something like 43, that. Forty three yeah. on their books, eight goalkeepers, um selling players like Gallagher who mm. know the league inside out. Well, but, <laughs> well yeah, it hasn't sold yet because it's all fallen through, so he may still may still yeah. be there, but that could fuck him up for PSR yeah. if, if if he doesn't get sold. Um it just if I'm a Chelsea fan, I am just so incredibly frustrated and bored of what their owners are doing. I just it feels like they're trying to—they're playing a video game. It feels like they're playing football manager yeah. or LMA manager or something like that. And I think that if they can keep Nkunku fit, he's a big player. We did, we saw we saw so little of him last year. If they can keep him fit and keep Palmer firing like he was last season, I think they could still have a good season. But I just worry that with Maresca supposedly behind the scenes and maybe not being able to quite get his message across the way he would like, especially how they finished under Pochettino last year. This would be a very different conversation if Pochettino mm. was still there. I'd be putting them a lot higher up. Um, but even even Poch, I mean, if if Poch was still there and they were having a summer like this, even Poch is going to be like, "What the fuck are yeah. you doing? Like, what are yeah. you doing to me?" So there's a lot of quality. In, there's a lot of individual quality in those players they're buying. There's no doubt about that. They're not they're not buying absolute, you know, awful players. But to buy as many as they have, how on earth is Maresca going to keep that squad happy and cohesive? Mm. I mean, under Graham Potter, there were stories of the training room not being big enough for the squad, so people were sitting on the floor. What is it like now? Like, how big have they got a fucking sports or is their changing ground now? 
Matty Moreska's having to get on a loud hater just to get his point across to everyone because no one can hear him. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I feel like Chelsea are going to have to live with the fact that they're going to have some great games this year. They're going to dominate possession, a bit like we saw under Pochettino. But I also think that they are going to have so many of those crazy results where you just go, where did that come from? Mm. I mean, they, they'll just lose games that you just don't expect them to. So, yeah, I think it's going to be another really up and down season for Chelsea. They are, of course, in uh, they're in Europe this year, I believe. Europe, conference, conference League, conference league yeah. this year. Um, so maybe that's why they've bought uh, two, effectively two squads they're going to have 25 for the Premier League and 25 yeah. for the Conference League yeah. uh, but I mean what, if you're a fan by the way you're turning up the Conference League how the, you're not going to know who's playing <laughs> like, so yeah Chelsea in ninth I think it's going to be a crazy roller coaster season if they if one or two of their players fire they could go higher well, I mean, but I, I also think they think like shocker. academy players are going to start leaving because they won't even be able to break into no you know, to play against these teams in Kazakhstan because they've got like another 25 play- first team players that have got to get game time as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's madness. Um, as I say, individual quality, Lavia playing well, Jewsbury Hill's a good player, Pedro Neto's a good player. It's just Camaresca finds mm. uh, a formula. Like, how on earth is he going to pick his best 11 on a regular basis? It's just, there's going to be no, you know, so many teams outside of Guardiola's teams rely on cohesion being built by having the same team mostly week after week mm. so they, they build up that knowledge of playing with each other and Chelsea's team has been different every single game in pre-season by yeah. all accounts and I can see it rotating heavily as the season yeah. goes on so yeah anyway that's enough for me about Chelsea Chelsea in ninth uh, for me um, you mm. had West Ham didn't you so it's me eighth Aston Villa um, I am I am practically at the point with the Villa that I just feel like Champions League might hurt them in the way that it did Newcastle last year that being said there's every chance that, you know again back to the point about where we could put all these teams um, Aston Villa could easily have another great season and get back into Europa League I think getting deep in the Champions League and getting top four again would be just a stretch too far for them mm-hmm. I think um, I like the signings they've made they've had another very astute summer getting deals done early almost with no warning of who they're buying they just sort of like click, a, click your fingers mm-hmm. and they've signed somebody but I just feel like if I was Aston Villa, I would want to place more effort and focus on Champions League. And if they, depending on what group they get, if they get a Newcastle group from last season, that could really hurt them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but if they go deep, it could hurt them because they're still in it and having to rotate the team around. If they get more injuries, it's such a, a different approach that you have to take for that sort of thing. So I'm going to say Aston Villa 8th is a bit of a crazy one. I'm probably going to get pelters for it, but I am going to stick to my guns and say Aston Villa will be in 8th this season. Um, for 8th, I've got Chelsea, so not too dissimilar for you. Um, and I won't go into loads and loads of monologue because you've kind of summed it up, <laughs> really. Um, my main reason was because under Poch, it took him a long, long time to almost find his settled 11, um, pretty much up until the last 10 games. And then they went on a really good winning run and managed to get themselves up to the Europa League spot. Yeah. Um, obviously, the only reason they dropped down was because of United winning the FA Cup. But... Um, I think it'll be exactly the same. Brand new manager um, who's only managed in the championship. Another 15 players in in this window. Um, they're going to have to get used to playing with each other. Um, I think. I think. Will the will the manager last the season? I don't know. I was toying with him being my first manager sacked. Yeah, I was as well. Um, but I think it's going to be. I think you know. I, t- I don't know what to say. It's one of. The, it's another one of those where they could absolutely cook this season um, but I, I don't think they will I think they'll str- struggle and I think a lot of Chelsea fans would agree um, I think they'll struggle in terms of having a regular start in 11 there'll be so many players in and out that aren't used to playing with each other week in week out um, so that's my reason for them being down there yeah. um, and then 7th um, another one you've sort of mentioned really I've put Villa in at 7th place um, again exactly the same as you I'd I've sort of gone off of the how did Newcastle do last year? Um, I mean, in fairness, Newcastle had a absolutely horrible group with, and a horrible list of injuries as well. Yeah, um, they had three massive fixtures, so they were constantly having to play their strongest eleven. Um, Villa have made some good signings and they've improved their squad, but I think you know we're going to start <coughs> seeing Villa being 1-0 up or, or something like that and, and Ollie Watkins is going to have to come off in the 60th minute because they've got Champions League on Tuesday um, because they're going to want to do as well as they can in that so yeah. I think for that reason Villa will be 
lower down. I think they'll still be in there and, and they'll still be a very tough team to play against. But mm. I think that Champions League um, will have an impact. Yeah, they're going to have to rotate a lot. Last season, they they could spend... I mean, I know they're in the Conference League, but they could spend a decent chunk of time playing their stronger team mm. in the Premier League and getting through Conference League games reasonably comfortably when you're playing the kind of minnows of Europe. Um, but they are going to have to heavily rotate, so it's not... You know, they're going to have to rely on players on their bench playing big parts in this season. They're going to have to make sure they're making lots of subs to keep people fresh. Um, and then, of course, you've got you know, the other cup competitions if they're mm-hmm. in them as well. So there's a, there's a lot to consider. Uh, seventh place, I am going to go for West Ham. Um, I feel like with the signing, one of the reasons I put them here is because I feel like this is actually what we need to achieve. Because when you're making signings like Full Krug, like Tadebo, uh, Wambasaka, you know, these are players who are arguably... Certainly with Tadebo, with the sort of players, the teams that are after him, uh, Full Krug as well, good good striker from Dortmund, kind of punching above our weight a little bit with these transfers because we don't have Europe to offer them. Mm. Um, and we've already got players like Kudas, Pakatar, well, at least until January with Pakatar <laughs> when the um, when the uh, the hearing is is, is over. If we do, if we don't have Europe to offer these players next season, the the difficulty of keeping hold of those players becomes a lot greater. Kudus will be one that will be on the top of a lot of people's hit lists if he has another good season. Mm. Um, Bowen, I think, will stick around anyway because he's on a long contract and he, I think he's now going to be made club, club captain. So I think he will stick around anyway and I don't think his um, father-in-law will let him leave. <laughs> um, you know, but you know, these and the only good thing is that we'll probably get very good money for players like Pakatar and, and Kudus. Um, Toribo, I think we will probably sign him on a permanent deal once the loan thing. I think the, the obligation to buy, I think, is after five games. Right. So it's it's basically they've done this for PSR reasons so that they don't have to put the transfer money into mm. this season. It goes into next season. Um, Wamba Saka, I think, is a great signing. I think that Rodriguez is going to be a good signing as well. Somerville, great. You know, we've made some brilliant signings. So I really feel like the target has to be Europe this season. Whether we achieve it or not, I don't know. But I feel like it has to be that. Um, and Lopetegui's got a big job in his hand because under Wolves, one of the reasons that apparently he left was because he wasn't backed in the transfer market. You don't have that excuse yeah, this time around, yeah, so yeah. it's all on him. Um, can he play a more attacking brand of football in pre-season? We've looked quite good going forward, especially in the game at the weekend, but defensively we've still looked really bad, but we have yet to see wan and Tadebo in that back line. So hopefully we can shore up the back because we were so poor defensively last season. With mm-hmm. The worst defensive record outside of the bottom three last season, they have to sort that out. So, um, yeah, I think West Ham fans who want to see just unbelievable free-flowing attacking football need to just temper their expectations <laughs> because I feel like we do need to be slightly pragmatic to make sure that we can so- consolidate our defence and then go from there and then hopefully Pakatar, Kudas, all these exciting attacking players can just kind of flourish and mm. do their thing which is what they weren't allowed to do under um, under David Moyes. Uh, right, moving on into sixth place we're into the Europa League places now. I've gone for Manchester United in sixth. Um, I might have had them slightly higher uh, if they hadn't already seemingly like they've got an injury crisis on their hands mm. Luke Shaw now is injured again Your, um, Yoro Yoro he's out until the new year is it? Uh, no he's out for three months three months yeah. okay um, Hoyland is out for a six weeks, six weeks. Yeah. so these are these are injuries to quite big players to start the season which uh-huh. is not a great way to start the season um, jury's out on players like Sancho on Rashford on McTominay on Casemiro um, I think Delit and uh, Maswari, I think, is the two coming in. Mm-hmm. They're good signings um, that, that really, really help. I just don't know whether Manchester United are going to have the consistency because they have not shown consistency at all, really, under Ten Hag. Um, I like the signings. I like Xerxes. I think he could be good. I've not seen huge amounts of him, but from what I hear, he could be good for the Premier League. It sounds like he's built and ready for it. For me, the big thing with United is, is that can they relinquish when they relinquish control of games that we see and then they go on and get battered they have to stop that when they're under the cost they need to find ways of getting control of a game back and stopping those hammerings you know if, when you're under the cost and you're, you're down 2-0 can you can you scrape a point can you get control back when you're 1-0 down and just scrape a point or even get a 2-1 win they have to learn how to do that better than they've done in recent times if they can do that I think they'll get into Europa League um, either in 5th or 6th quite honestly but mm-hmm. I've put them in 6th for now um, but I feel like it's going to be another hit and miss season for United. I think you're, again, a little bit like Chelsea, you're going to have some ri- ridiculously stupid results where you mm. lose games and play shit and then the following week you'll be unreal. So, uh, yeah, sixth place Man United for me. Yeah, I've also put us at sixth. Um, I kind of think 
if all things go well, we could be fighting for fourth, fifth. Um, but again, like you say, we've had some injuries already. Um, the whole, all the sort of backroom team that have come in, I think, are going to be um, a massive yeah. upgrade for us. Big, big improvements there for sure. If we can get an Ugarte or a Fafana, another centre midfielder in to play in that number six role, um, I think we'll start looking up towards the sort of fourth, fifth mm-hmm. spots. But at the moment, with the likes of Casemiro and McTominay still playing there, I just, I think, we'll be so weak in midfield. Um, Mine who can't do it all on his own. No, he can't. Uh, and as good as he is, he's not going to be able to hold that midfield. On yeah, his own. and obviously we don't have that sort of focal point striker. I don't really know what Xerxes has been brought in for. I don't know if he's going to be a striker, if he's just another wing option. Um, but Bruno's been playing in the false nine in preseason. Um, so yeah, I don't. Know. It's a weird one. I don't really know. It could. It's another one where it could go very well or very wrong. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that the way everything seems to be, you know, the signings come in in a good signings, the sales going out are good sales. Um, the back, like I said, the backroom team coming in is, is a massive positive. So I'm hoping we're on the up, but I think we'll see this first game, the home game against Fulham, um, what kind of team we're going to be this season. Yeah, it's important to start well for sure. Um, Fifth place, Dan? Yeah, this one. Potentially very controversial. Um, probably get some question marks on it, but I've gone for Liverpool. Okay. Um, not a single sign in other than this goalkeeper they're going to potentially loan out. Um, you've got Trent, Van Dijk, and I think Salah yep. in the last year of their contracts. Um, Van Dijk's like 33, 34 now. Salah is in his sort of 33s, I think. Um, brand new manager that has come from Feyenoord, which is great. I know he's done well in Feyenoord, but in uh, Holland, sorry, but doesn't necessarily translate to the Premier League. Um, I've got a few mates that are Liverpool fans and they're like, oh, we've been unreal in pre-season. And I'm like, trust me, we were playing like Barcelona in pre-season a couple of seasons ago. <laughs> and then as soon as the uh, Premier League kicked off, we were absolutely crap. So I, I don't know if this is more hope rather than what <laughs> I think will happen, but... I think we could obviously the the Klopp sort of era is over now. Which is I, gonna be very weird. Yeah, not seeing him in the Liverpool dugout this year. Um, I think we could see a bit of a drop off. Maybe not as far as fifth, but I mean it's funny because I've seen stuff sort of, you know, can Liverpool win the title without signings? And I'm like, I don't think they'll be anywhere near the title. No, I don't think. I don't think they will. Um, but yeah, I've gone fifth. Um, if they are nowhere near fifth. I will hold my hands up and take the hate. But as a United fan, um, I'm hoping they are. Yeah, I was going to say, as a United fan, it's ingrained <laughs> into you to hate Liverpool. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I think that's uh, that's fair. Right, uh, in fifth place, I've gone for Spurs. Mm-hmm. Um, I almost had them in my top four because of the Solanke signing. Um, but I'm going to stick to my guns and say fifth place. I think that... I do. I really like Ange as a bloke, as a manager. I love his passion. I love how straight talking he is with the press. Um, I love the fact that, well, again, a bit like you, I'm ingrained to hate Spurs because of my West Ham <laughs> um, allegiances. But if I'm putting my non-biased hat on, I think that Spurs have created a culture within their club now that the fans can really link and relate to. Mm. Um, they play a much more attractive brand of football, so the fans are being entertained. That brings with it a bit of freedom for the players, like people like Madison can be a bit freer. The only the only problem is is that I just don't know. For me, I don't know what Solanke is going to be like for them. I think that with better service, in theory, he should score just as many, if not as more, more goals than he did at Bournemouth because he's going to have players like Kulisevsky, Brennan Johnson, Son Heung Min, um, Timo Werner, what a guy, <laughs> um, Madison behind him, etc., etc. He's going to have a lot of talent, highly talented players around him. So in theory, he should score more goals. But he's had one season of scoring good goals, good lever of goals at the top level. So 65 million is a risk for them. I think it's still a good signing because he has all the attributes to succeed. Um, but if he doesn't, if he doesn't quite, you know, even if he plays okay, but maybe only gets, I don't know, 10, 15 goals, can they rely on Son again? Can they rely on Kulisevsky to bring mm. in the goals? Can they rely on Brendan Johnson to bring in the goals? Richarlison, I think, is a busted flush. I think he's done. I don't think we'll see a huge amount of him this mm. season, to be honest, unless there's injuries. So, yeah, I think there's just, a, for me, just a few question marks around um, their attacking side and whether they can get enough goals from those players. Can they share it among them enough? 
Um, and defensively, I think getting rid of Emerson Royale is one of the best bits of business they've done all summer because he is fucking dog shit. I was kind of annoyed that he left, to be honest. Their defence, if they're all fit, is good. Pedro Porro, Udogi, Van de Ven, Romero, they're, they're, that's a solid defence. Injury rise last year, it, it crippled them defensively. So mm. a lot of their success this year relies on whether they can keep that back line fit. Um, I like their goalkeeper, um, Vicario. I think he's good. So I could see a situation where Spurs do creep into the top four, but I think they might just come up slightly short. But I think it will be I think it will be close. Yeah. I think well, while we're going through all of this, I think it's very important to say that probably outside of that top two, that third down to sort of sixth, yeah, I, think I, mean, it's, I think it's going to be really... I think it'll be one of the closest. With no data or no, knowledge exactly. of what's going to happen. You know, it, it could be two games in and, and be like, oh, actually, these are completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but equally, I, 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 I would like to... I predict that this will be one of the closest fights between third and sixth that we've yeah, seen for a while. Yeah. I think that the difference between those teams is, is so little now mm -hmm. because the quality they've got in their squads... I can see it going down to the wire. I don't think... I think the top two might break away a little mm. bit again. Maybe not as much. But I think that group below them, I think, are going to be neck and neck for a good chunk of this season. So. It's funny. I, I saw a um, video today. I, I can't remember what it was about. I think it was, they were going through the transfers and it was like um, sort of comparing the big six. And for a second, I was like, are we going to be in that? <laughs> <laughs> Who is the big six? Yeah. Though? Like, it's always stereotypically been, you know, United, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. But now, I mean, are Chelsea in it? Yeah. Are, are United I mean. in it? That's like, I mean. did Newcastle and Villa now become part of that? Mm. Um, it depends on what metric you use, of course. But um, right, okay, uh, in fourth place fourth. now. Um, I'm going to go Liverpool. I think they will sneak in. Mm -hmm. I totally understand why I might get pelters from non-Liverpool fans here because they've not made any signings. They got turned down by um, Zubamendi. Zubamendi. Anthony Gordon, they went after that, didn't work out. They, you know, they've been apparently sniffing around players, but it does seem like their transfer business, actually in recent memory, has been pretty poor. Like it felt like one or two of those signings towards the end of last summer's window was a little bit panicked. They yeah. worked out quite well in the end. Yeah. McAllister was a good signing. He was done early, I think. Um, but to not bring in any players in is, is a big risk. I know they've got a new manager in who can freshen up ideas, but I feel like they needed a freshen up of certain players. They've got a great talented group of youngsters coming through that might see more game time this year. So I'm putting them in fourth because I feel like the quality they possess in their side right now is still good enough to challenge for that top four, and I think they will sneak in. Um, they have been very good in preseason. I've seen a lot of their highlights, and they've looked really good. I think injuries were key if they can keep uh, Jota fit, Diaz fit. Um, I can see Gakpo having a bit of a good year this year because he was out of out of position a reasonable amount with Klopp. Arnie Slot comes in. He's had a great Euros, uh, Gakpo. So I just wonder, you know, that link with a fellow compatriot manager might just bring a little bit more out of Gakpo. Um, Nunes will probably score 10 goals and miss 400. And Salah will be Salah. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think they will just sneak in, but I think it's going to be very, very close to Liverpool this year. So, yeah, they're my pick for fourth. Nice. Um, fourth, I've gone for Spurs. Um, I was toying with putting them higher because I think they've. I think Solanke is going to be great for them um, that sort of focal point because I think they've struggled since not having Kane um, and the way they like to press which is sort of all out attack um, Solanke is a sort of very pressing striker um, so I think he's a very good sign and for them maybe a little bit overpriced but yeah and I'm very surprised someone like Levy has paid that um, but I think he's a good sign and um, yeah, it's weird with Levy isn't it because sometimes he really doesn't seem to want to dip his hand in yeah. his pocket and then all of a sudden they'll come out Splash with a massive 65 million yeah. on Solanke um, but yeah I, th I think Spurs will be in the Champions unless they really and I'm not taking the piss unless they really bottle it this season um, I think they'll they'll be quite comfortably in the Champions I was tempted to put them a bit higher but um, there's another team that I think will potentially do better Yeah. Um, needing me on to third and I feel like we might have the same one which I'm surprised at <laughs> um, I really didn't think that you would potentially have the same team as me I could be wrong um, I've gone for Newcastle uh, yes they're also my third third pick as well um, as much as I hate it because we've got a, new, a Geordie uh, fan on the show yep. um, and I'm sure he'll love that we've got um, <laughs> third well, it guarantees he turns up for the podcast for a little while. Yeah. Longer, it? So. Um, no European football this season, thanks to us. Um, and they, But they've obviously still got a very strong team that got them into the Champions League, and I feel like they've only improved on it. It got Pope back this season. Yeah. Um, 
fully fit. They've, I mean, Isak is one of the best strikers in the Premier League. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah. Other than Jota. <laughs> <laughs> that's an in-joke, right? Before we get pelters, that's an in-joke, okay? Leave him alone. Um, yeah, I, I just, you know, they've got the likes of Gordon, who was unreal last season. Um, Joel Linton's somehow one of the best centre mids. In- <laughs> how has that, that happened? How is Joel Linton one of the best box-to-box midfielders in the world yeah. these days? Um, I just think player for player, and if the, you know, if they bed in the likes of Liveramento and Lewis Hall at, at fullback, because I, I think Dan Byrne at left back has been a big weakness. In yeah, my they, they have to pl- plug that this season um, for sure. Trippier's obviously getting on a bit now. Um, if, I mean, if they do bring in Gay as well, it's only going to make them very even stronger um, so yeah Newcastle my pick for third and I'm not going to apologise for that. no I've gone for Newcastle as well I think the lack of European football takes a lot of pressure off them um, in terms of squad rotation injuries obviously was such a big thing last year we don't we don't really know what Newcastle could have done last year because those injuries were so severe it stopped them from being able to rotate their team too much um, they were handed the group of death and still almost got mm. out of it you know, if you think back to one or two of those big decisions in the PSG game that could have gone their way, um, you know, they, they could have got through that group in second place and, mm. you know, they could have got on and done who knows what. Um, I love what Eddie Howe's doing there. I think the players they've got are so, so talented. I mean, they've got players like um, Jacob Murphy, who's like such a, I don't know, he always reminds me of a little bit of like um, how you kind of perceive James Milner at times kind mm-hmm. of one of those players who just kind of he's around mm-hmm. he's an average he'll give you a 6 or 7 out of 10 every week but there are times where he looks like a really quite yeah. superb player and apparently he's been scoring for fun and assisting for fun in, in pre-season, pre-season yeah. so you know for Eddie Howe to be able to get that out of players and it's always a mark of a good coach when Eddie Howe can when, or anybody can can improve players at that sort of level um, the, the one big obviously is Tenali coming back two or three games into the season mm-hmm. um, that's going to be a t- very interesting to see how he reintegrates I know he's been able to train and stuff like that so hopefully he'll be up to speed um, and then yeah it's down to can they keep those players fit but I think on their day if they've got a fully fit squad Newcastle are going to be a very big force to be reckoned with this season um, I think Isak is one of the best strikers uh, in. I'm going to say I think he's one of the best strikers in world football I really do outside of the Premier League I mean outside of Haaland is there a better striker don't say Jota um, is, there a, is there a better striker outside of Haaland than Isak in the, in the Premier League in the Premier League no um, and there's a reason that he is the, the most picked FPL player this season obviously Haaland's price increases has helped with that but if everybody has turned to Isak mm-hmm. as their plan B so uh, yeah Newcastle in third place I think they'll have a terrific season um, so obviously it comes down to we. I think everyone knew probably we would have these as our top two um, but in what order? I have gone for Man City in second. Mm. I'll be honest, I've done it more out of hope than expectation because <laughs> I'm so fucking bored of them winning every season. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, yeah, there's there's an element of me wishing this into existence and there's also an element of me not wanting, to, wanting it to happen because Arsenal fans will become insufferable if they do win the league. But I do think that Arsenal have improved. I think they've made some good signings. Mm-hmm. I still think they need a striker I'm surprised they haven't gone for someone like Ivan Tony. I think he would be a good fit for them but Calafiori coming in is a great player have they player. signed anyone other than Calafiori? Um, I thought there was a uh, another midfielder who came in maybe I'm wrong I thought they just signed maybe him. maybe it's just Calafiori um, but yeah I, I still think that they seem to be progressing. Like last season, it felt to me like they they matured a lot. Declan Rice made a big difference for them last season. It feels like they did mature. If they had somebody who could put the ball in the back of the net a little bit more often um, and take the goal scoring pressure away from players like Saka, mm. Martinelli, Odegaard, um, Trossard, you know, if you found a twenty goal a season striker, that could be the finding final piece in that puzzle. Then David Raya has cemented that. Oh, he's the other player. Of course, David Raya, permanent permanent transfer for, uh, for him. Right, yeah. um, I, think I guess you can't really count him because yeah. he was there last season. But Technically, it's yeah. True. Um, defensively, they were superb last year. Saliba, Gabriel, Ben White, all really good players. They have Julian Timber back this year mm. after his long injury absence. So there's, 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 a, there's a lot to like about Arsenal and I just feel like maybe they can take that extra step. One way or the other, whether they don't win the Premier League or not, they have to win something. They mm-hmm. have to have something to show for this period of uh, 
not dominance, that's the wrong way to put it, but you know what I mean? They're this sort of like really sort of hot property style of football they're playing, where they're at the top of the Premier League or near the top, playing all this fancy football, you've got to have something to show for mm. it. A club like Arsenal will, will, will want that. So I don't think a League Cup will be enough. I think they'll they'll target FA Cup. They have to go deeper in the Champions League as well to really stamp their mark on, on European football. Semi-finals, I think, would be a minimum target for them, mm. I think, this season. So, yeah, uh, as far as Man City go, if I just wrap up the, the, the point here, um, there's one or two players that maybe a slight question marks over over them for me. Alvarez move, moving on is a big miss because he's a great plan B to have. He does chip in with a lot of important goals. Um, De Bruyne is not getting any younger. There was rumours of him moving going away, Saudi, yeah. going to Saudi. Edison, Edison yeah. Um, but they're obviously it's Man City. Uh, it sort of doesn't matter. Pep Guardiola has this way of making them compete every single season yeah. regardless of their success they never seem to drop off their levels don't seem to drop um, so yeah I'm going to put them second but I fully expect them to be right in the mix and every chance of them winning so I'm doing it out of more hope than expectation but just to be different and to hopefully will it into existence I'm going to go Arsenal first and Man City second this season I've been not different <laughs> I think Arsenal. I hope it goes down. I, to, to be honest, I kind of I want someone different to win it. I don't necessarily want Arsenal to win it, but I think they'll be the biggest challengers again. Um, I don't think it's good for the league for the same team to, and no. it does. It wouldn't matter. It's not just because it's City. If if it was United winning it every single year, as much as I would love that, it would be a bit boring. Um, it's that's why I like the Premier League. It's so competitive. You you never know who's going to finish where. Um, I mean, if we were predicting. La Liga would probably have sort of Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid, Barcelona top three every single year. Yeah. Um, whereas the Premier League, you know, you, you never really know what's going to happen other than City winning the league. Mm. Um, I, I, He's only got a year left in his contract. That's the thing, you know, Guardiola's got, it's his last season. Um, I don't think he'll renew. I think he's probably had enough now. Uh, he's probably wants he's, a new challenge. He stayed there a lot longer than he has at any yeah, other club. Yeah. So, um, England? Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> um, oh, don't get me wrong. I could see Arsenal potentially winning it, and then it literally went down to the very last game last time. I just think City have got so much quality in their team, and Guardiola over Arteta. I think he's just a, obviously a much better manager. Um, he just seems to pull rabbits out of hats. He, you know, even when City are looking down and out. I think was it when. It was against Arsenal when they sort of bottled it. Um, they were like 13 points ahead and then City just sort of, they went on the 100 metre sprint and yeah, they overtook the them and, and won it by about seven points or so. So they, they've just got that in them. Um, and, and and even like players, you look at pre-season and people have been like, oh, you know, they're not going to start with the likes of Foden and Rodri and stuff like that. They've got like Oscar Bob who probably walks into most Premier League teams. <laughs> yeah. um, that McAtee is supposed to be really good. He's, yeah. he's like the next Phil Foden and Foden's only like 22 or something. Yeah, with six Premier League trophies to his name. Yeah, you know, they, they just, they've got a conveyor belt of talent um, either through the academy or, or coming off of the sort of transfer market. Um, so I, I think we'll just see the same old City again um, sort of fighting for every single competition. I, I, I do think they'll win the league, but... Hopefully it's it's either very close again and, and is interesting or someone else wins it. Um, and as for Arsenal, again, I, th I think they'll go close. I think they've, like you say, they've improved. Um, they're obviously a, a young sort of team and, and they get as they get older, they get um, more experienced. Mm -hmm. um, I th Like you say, I think they've got to win something. They've, they've got to be in a, an FA Cup final or they've got to get to the Champions League semi-final, in my opinion, because... Champions League they've not really been a part of no um, I think they've got to be that sort of challenger um, be the sort of other Man City um, but yeah I just don't think that they will get over the line and, and mm. beat that Manchester City team yeah it'd be interesting to see if, if they don't get over the line again and trophies elude them again like how long can they keep going again you know Depends on, I guess, what Arsenal's board want. You know, do they do they stick with Arteta for as long as they can and just hope that sooner or later he finds the magic formula? Um, you know, do do they 
do they then struggle to att- attract players? I don't. I don't know what the. I, I don't, I don't know, know what the offshoot of them not winning anything year after year. <laughs> if becomes. they come second again and it's close and they don't win anything, I think they'd be silly to sack him. Um, I'm not saying they should or would. Yeah, no. I'm just more I'm, just. I'm elaborating on what yeah. you said. I, I think you know if you go looking for another manager, it you know they're obviously all on board with what Arteta's doing yeah. um, all the players seem to be enjoying life at Arsenal the players he's brought in they, it, it, they're sort of gelling very well if it wasn't for this unreal machine that is Man City yeah. I think they'd have won the last two Premier Leagues I mean you know we, we just alluded it to a moment ago with Guardiola potentially leaving at the end of this season exactly. could next season yeah. be Arsenal's real big opportunity yeah. if they don't get over the line this year imagine because... he announces sign another four year contract like that. <laughs> Oh, oh, Arteta's gonna fuck this. <laughs> just walks away. <laughs> Tears up his contract. <laughs> so right there we go. Um, that is our Premier League table predictions for this season. We'll see um, how uh, wildly wrong we are. Yeah, we'll do our review video at the end of the season and see where we're at. Um, I feel like we could be either wildly wrong or, or get like record points for us because mm. I think there's gonna be so many play uh, so many teams that could be either like third or eighth I hope some of the or, obscure ones we've got right yeah as we, we should probably stop doing this really should we? <laughs> so um, yeah anyway thank you very much if you've stuck around this long with us uh, make sure you listen to our podcast we go live every single Tuesday although they're not this Tuesday coming because we're away um, but yeah every other Tuesday for the rest of the season will be there um, we've got obviously stuff coming out on YouTube here so make sure you subscribe make sure you link in our, to our Patreon if you want to subscribe to the channel as well um, give us a, a membership you can now on YouTube now that we are over that 500 subscriber mark and uh, yeah oh the other thing actually um, Premier League predictions if you are interested we've created a form which we'll, I'll link in the description below and you can go on there and you can give us your predictions for things like title winners, top four, top six, relegation, first manager to be sacked, etc., etc. You can go on there, give us your thoughts, and then at the end of the season, we'll run through them on the podcast or here on YouTube uh, and pick out some of the um, some of the better ones. I think that's everything. Yeah. Fancy league. Yeah. Link in the description as well. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> I think that might be it. No. Yeah, right, yeah, let's go. Sounds good. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. See you later.